Olga. You are the Olympic champion in the discus, and you've been to the Olympics five times, which is a remarkable feat for anyone. My question for you today is, how do you stay motivated to stay at the top of your field for over 20 years? I think it's a simple answer. It's, you just love what you are doing. Outside motivation usually, usually doesn't last that long. But if you have that little fire in you, you're curious how much you can develop yourself, what you can make out of yourself, how far you can reach, uh, what most you can sculpt, then it's easy because there's always something that keeps you along. So you're saying that if somebody's going to offer you money or crack the whip, you can do it for a short time, but not for 20 years. But for a long-term investment, you need to do what you love. You have to, yes, love what you do, and you have to love yourself and love yourself enough to have the discipline and, uh, and also be, being open-minded, self-critical. I'm not talking about uh, narcissistic type of love. I'm talking about uh, self-appreciation. You're here in this world and you're doing something that's good and you love to do it. And so then you're like a flower or a tree, just doing your own thing. So it's important to see value in yourself. Yeah. To grow into a greater talent. Exactly, exactly. And you can, uh, it, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to think you're going to make the NBA. It means that you simply work on your free throws, you go on your passes, your dribble, to make, to, to make it the very best that form of do. art that you can do. Mm -hmm. Because even in athletics, it's a form of art. Anything you do can be a form of art. You can be a locksmith, turn it into a form of art. You just have to have this passion for it. It's love and passion. Let's take you back to 1960 and the Olympics in Rome. Now, just before the Olympics, you'd had a baby, so it took you out of your training schedule. Your home country had rejected you and said you, you weren't allowed to compete for them. And then delegates from the American delegation said they wouldn't shake your hand because you weren't American enough. And then the Czech team, the girls with whom you had competed in the past, they spat on the ground in front of you right before your competition and that set you off your game. How did you stay motivated? How did you compete and still finish in the top 10? Well, I think I finished in top 10 because I was a good disco thrower. <laughs> so that, um, you know, the kinesthetic sense of my body carried that through. Uh, the reason I did not um, got the longest possible throw I could deliver there was this boulder on my shoulders of all the negatives. And that's how it happens, you know? But you're saying that because of your training, because you worked so hard, right. you had so much self-confidence before, right. it distracted you and you were still able to throw and stay in the top 10, right. but it distracted you enough that you were a little off your game. Right. At that moment in Rome, which was like a bad, bad time, I started to feel I'm a displaced person. And in some way, I started to feel for all those people who are displaced persons, I live in camps somewhere and away from home. And, and I wish I had the knowledge of, that I would say, okay, I'll do great. It's gonna be like my gift to them. But I wasn't smart enough to be able to, to work it through. Now you've told me before that it's not just the physical training and the practice that gets you through, that gives you the confidence. But you told me about a runner at UCLA who had a different technique to lift his confidence and lift his spirits. Well, he was a young man, uh, probably, you know, kid in high school who wanted to be a greatest runner. And he trained very, very hard and actually received a scholarship to UCLA. And, but he wasn't satisfied that he arrived because he was just one of the very good runners and the coaches didn't think much of him. So he had to build his own self-esteem or elevate his own self-esteem. So in the morning, he would look in the mirror and told himself good things. Yeah, you know, you are tall enough, you are beautiful, you're, you're muscular, you are going to become a world record holder. 
And he trained very hard and he had this total faith in that and he did and he became a world record holder. Now you've talked about loving yourself and having confidence for training, but I know some people who really like to be challenged negatively. They like somebody saying, you're not good enough to really rise uh, to the occasion to make their game better. And I remember an incident very early in your career when you were a teenage girl. Uh, in which you were asked to sub for the women's handball team. You were a soccer goalie, but they asked you to be a goalie for the handball team. It was a disaster, you lost the game, and then the captain of the team abused you verbally and told you you were stupid and should never be seen on the field. And rather than just quit, you went to another goalie, got trained, and then came back and within one year, you were on the national women's handball team. Would you say you were using revenge then as one of your mm -hmm. motivators? I don't think so. I, I don't think it was revenge. It was just, my, I already had some success because as a kid, I was a really good soccer goalie. So I just went ahead to become, even in this new sport, the best goalie. I, and I, 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 of course I was, I was like hurt and insulted, but then I, if I lost, a game for 28 to 0, so how can you get insulted, right? But I decided I will become a very good goalie. And the soccer goalie, who happened to be the top goalie in, the, in, Prague, well, in Czechoslovakia, he motivated me. He said, okay, let's take a look at you. And he just pummeled me with two or three balls until I was exhausted. And then he said, I think I can make something out of you. Go put something on the bruises and come back tomorrow. That was a motivation. You know what it was? He had faith in me. And oh. if somebody has faith in you, that's a strong motivation too. You have faith in you and somebody that you admire or somebody that you feel uh, you can trust that they, they are straight with you. They put faith in you, that's very strong also. Okay, so let me summarize what I think you've told us today, <laughs> okay. which is, it's important to love what you do, even, either as a vocation or avocation, right. and then love yourself enough okay. to give yourself the time and the discipline to exactly. do it. Exactly. It really helps yes. when somebody has faith in you as an added bonus, but really it comes from your spirit within, your self-confidence, which is built through training every day, which is yes. displayed later, much like a flower growing from a seed uh, in competition. Yes, I think, I think that's summed perfectly.